Hi there, and thank you so much for joining me this evening as we look at a topic that I happen to be very passionate about. Uh, my name is Lisa Meisner, and I'm a wife, mother, massage therapist, health coach, hydrotherapist, homesteader, and a child of God. Um, I'm going to share with you just a little bit about my story in a minute, but before we get started, I do want to just... Uh, mentioned that I am not a medical professional and the things I'm going to share with you today in this class are in no way intended to treat, diagnose, or um, cure, or whatever. Um, so any of the suggestions that I'm going to give you today of the things that I did or am doing currently in my home for myself are just that. They are things that I'm doing, and you are welcome to take them and try them if you would like. Um, if you are on any medications, I would definitely consult with your physician before you make any changes to your plan. Okay, so just a little bit about myself. Um, I was born and raised in uh, Michigan. It's a picture of myself when I was nine. Kind of cute, huh? <laughs> well, actually, um, that was three years before my parents decided to move out of town. We lived in a nice little community in a smaller town, and my parents decided to move into the country. So they bought raw land and developed it and purchased a brand new modular home and um, we were so excited. Uh, we moved in. Uh, well, actually, when they first delivered the home to the property, they told us you need to let it air out for about three weeks before you move in, which we did. Then we moved in, and three weeks after moving in, we were, all of us, sick as dogs. And we were so sick that we actually had friends help help us. We moved in with some friends and they took care of us. We went and saw numerous doctors and the bottom line is that we were diagnosed with environmental toxicity. Now you might be thinking, uh-huh, trailer toxicity, it's formaldehyde, right? Wrong. Actually, there wasn't really but all, I mean, maybe a trace amounts of formaldehyde in the home. It was actually a laundry list of a whole bunch of different chemicals, preservatives, etc., that were in the home and off-gassing um, in high quantities, um, very toxic quantities in our home during that time. And as a result, all of us were so sick. Um, there's, I could share a whole lot of what happened in that story, but I'm going to keep it really simple. We detoxed. Um, it took us three years to detox before we could function in normal society again. You know, this toxic overload at 11 years old affected me in quite a number of different ways. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to focus on one specific aspect of the impact of that toxic overload. And that was how it f affected my hormones. Um, just a couple of years later, uh, at 13 years old, I went through puberty. And that's when all of my symptoms set in. Um, I had abnormally heavy bleeding, severe cramping. My periods or cycles were very, very irregular. It was some months were super short, others were really long. Um, I also had very, very painful breasts. They were um, it was painful enough where even just simple tasks like giving hugs or running and or especially riding horses were simply out of the question. It was too painful. Um, and I lived with that for the next 10 years thinking that was just normal. That was the way of life for womanhood um, until I was diagnosed with fibrocystic breast disease and finally realized that what I was living with was not normal at all. Um, so I did a bunch of research and I learned that fibrocystic breast disease could actually be, um, was actually caused by a, by a hormonal imbalance and that having that Im hormonal imbalance could actually be a risk uh, factor for breast cancer. So as you can imagine, I was very um, urgent about taking care of this problem and I wanted to do it naturally. So I did a bunch of research and I put myself on a program to naturally balance my hormones. 
But before I jump into how I balance my hormones, I want to talk just a little bit about toxicity and toxicity overload. Many of you maybe have not experienced what I went through, um, but very interestingly, one of the many doctors that we went and spoke with gave us an illustration of a, about how our bodies handle toxins, and I want to share, pass that on to you. Um, so picture everyone as if they were a barrel. We're all different. So, you know, genetics, lifestyle, environment. So we all react differently to different types of chemicals that our bodies collect. So you can kind of picture like a faucet filling up this barrel. But each of us has a limit that we can personally handle. When I was 11 years old, what happened was my barrel overflowed with exposure to the toxins and it resulted in a whole bunch of very serious symptoms as a result. So it was very obvious that we had something major going on. So we spent several years detoxing our bodies to eliminate the toxic load our system had. And as a result, you could picture the toxic level in our barrel went down and our symptoms disappeared. So the lower you keep that level of chemicals in your system, the lower down or empty would be best, right? But we're constantly exposed to chemicals all around us, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But our goal really is to try and keep that, that level in our barrels down as far as we possibly can. You know, we all react to chemicals, but for most people, you don't see the kind of symptoms that I experienced or that I saw with a toxic overload. Instead, it just sort of accumulates in your system over time. And later on in life, you see a breakdown in your health and you go, well, what happened? I lived healthfully or, you know, I exercised or whatever, but you're seeing a breakdown in your health. Well, my friends, this is what's happening is that we're accumulating these these chemicals and toxins in our system and they're breaking down the normal functions of our body so that later in life we we see a breakdown in our health. So whether you like it or not, chemicals do affect you. So, but let's just talk about hormones specifically right now because that's the topic of our discussion today. So when when we talk about hormones, a lot of people think of basically two types of hormones. You have estrogen and progesterone. Both of those hormones, especially uh, female hormones, both of those hormones have many, many, many different roles in the body. But just to name a couple, estrogen turns energy into fat. Estrogen also uh, prepares the body for pregnancy. Whereas progesterone takes fat and turns it into energy, um, but it's also survive. It's it's also necessary for the survival of your ovum. It's kind of like the happy environment for babies to grow. So estrogen and progesterone, they kind of work um, in concert with each other, um, balancing each other out all the time. So a very simplistic description of how these hormones work is that they're chemical messengers and they attach to cell receptors on the surface of the cell delivering the message that was intended, which creates an action or impacts or affects the nucleus of the cell. That's just a really simplistic description of what's going on here. So let's just take a quick look at the estrogen and progesterone levels in our bodies during a typical monthly cycle. During the monthly cycle, generally speaking, when estrogen is high, you'll notice that the progesterone is relatively low. But then as the progesterone starts to peak, estrogen plummets. So these hor hormones really are inversely proportional. I like to think of it as a delicate, beautiful dance. Estrogen, then progesterone. One steps over and lets the other move. And then they switch places and start all over again. So having that balance and keeping those hormones where they're constantly working with each other in this delicate little dance that they do every month is very important. So some people say, well, what about menopause? So when when menopause happens, that dance changes and progesterone levels generally drop 
and remain lower, kind of taking more of a back seat. The primary reason is that the progesterone is no longer needed for pregnancy. So as a result, estrogen remains slightly higher since the progesterone stays a little kind of behind the scenes. It's still there and it's still needed, but not as much as it was when you were um, when you were actively having cycles. So now I realize that in talking about estrogen and progesterone, there are many different types. Um, specifically, we're going to look at estrogen for a minute. Um, but what we're going to look at is we're just going to look at three main categories of estrogen, especially as it pertains to our, our discussion today. So first of all, we're going to look at natural progesterone. Um, it's the progesterone that our bodies produce, usually in the ovaries, the adrenals, and fat tissues. But our body really doesn't produce very much uh, estrogen because we really don't need that much. Uh, the second category we're going to look at is phytoestrogens. Now these are found in plant sources such as soy, red clover, flax, sesame seeds, wheat, oats, beans, yams, apples, and even carrots but the list could really go on and on. Phytoestrogens are a much weaker and less dominant form of estrogen, which actually supports the normal hormonal function, or you might think of that beautiful little dance that estrogen and progesterone do in your system. So the, the, the phytoestrogens help to balance that out. Now the last category we're gonna look at is xenoestrogens. These are man-made chemicals which happen to mimic natural estrogen in the body, except that they cause a lot of damage and disrupt that normal balance of hormones, particularly that beautiful dance between estrogen and progesterone. So where are these xenoestrogens hiding? In a toxic chemical factory? Maybe in a toxic home? Unfortunately, not necessarily. Often, they're hiding right in plain sight. Here's just a few of the locations you might find them right in your own home. Household cleaners. We all know that those are chemicals that we use to clean the house. Air fresheners. Um, soaps. Laundry soap, dish soap, hand soap, shampoo and conditioners. Um, makeup. Facial creams. Lotions. Perfumes. New clothes and new furniture plastics and even Teflon cookware are really high in xenoestrogens. Of course, dairy and meat, particularly where they have used synthetic hormones um, with, the, uh, with the dairy or, or with the meat, the animals, and also even food preservatives. Um, they add preservatives to a lot of our foods so that it will extend the shelf life. And a lot of those preservatives are xenoestrogens. So you can see that really we are inundated with these terrible xenoestrogens every single day of our lives and often many times over and over and over again. Ever heard of estrogen dominance? <laughs> now you can kind of begin to understand why. Because we're, we're constantly inputting all of these xenoestrogens into our system. It's creating a massive imbalance in that estrogen progesterone cycle that that's normal to our body's biology. So, but let's just take a quick quick look at the cell again. Now that we understand the three types of estrogen, let's go back and look at and see what's going on. So I mentioned earlier, our bodies don't need very much natural estrogen to function optimally. But each cell has estrogen receptors that respond to the messages that are brought to it for the cell nucleus. Xenoestrogens, however, block the receptor sites and prevent normal activity. Both xenoestrogens and estrogen function through the same receptor sites. However, the effect that they create is very different. Synthetic estrogen has a very high reactivity in the body and we lose that normal balancing effect from our naturally occurring estrogen. Because of the overexposure to these xenoestrogens, we now have an overexposure of estrogenic activity at the cell and to the cell nucleus, which, of course, it leads us to all the unwanted side effects that come from estrogen dominance, such as decreased sex drive, irregular abnormal periods, bloating and water retention, breast swelling and tenderness, 
mood swings, depression, weight gain, cold hands and feet, headaches, osteoporosis, and honestly, this list could go on and on. Does any of those things sound familiar? So if estrogen dominance is so bad, then why would we want to continue to ingest more estrogen in the form of phytoestrogen from the foods that we eat? Remember that list of phytoestrogenic foods I listed? I mean, oats, carrots, apples. So should we cut all of these items out of our diet so that we don't get too much estrogen? The answer is no. And let me show you why. So phytoestrogens actually protect your body's tissues from the negative effects of xenoestrogens and other hormonal pollutants by blocking all of the estrogen receptors with a much weaker, less dominant effect. Phytoestrogens don't come with any of the bad side effects that the xenoestrogens do. On the contrary, it actually supports a normal hormonal response in our system. That means that actually we want to increase the phytoestrogen to protect our bodies from those uh, terrible xenoestrogens that are floating around. So if you are estrogen dominant right now, phytoestrogens are going to be the key to helping you avoid the negative effects of too much, too much estrogen. Um, if you don't have enough estrogen, then obviously the phytoestrogen is going to help you to produce more estrogen. So let's talk a little bit about how to get rid of those terrible xenoestrogens and particularly what I did to balance my hormones naturally. Really, I, I did three basic things. Let me just outline them to you real quickly. So first of all, I detoxed. And what I mean by that is I removed the toxins from my home and I actively de detoxed my body. We're going to look at that in more detail in a minute. I also supported because as you're removing the toxins from your system, it's important to support your body with the nutrients that it does need to function optimally. So we're talking a healthy diet, supplementation, greens, immune support. We're going to look at all of that in a little more detail in just a minute. The third thing I did was balance. I used herbs particularly the ones that had a lot of phytoestrogen to balance my hormones. So let's look through each one of these and take a closer look at what I did to accomplish each of these three things. First of all, detox. I just have to say this, you really can't solve a crisis until you get to the root of the problem, which is why detox is so important. We have to remove the toxins from our environment and from our from constantly inputting them to our system before we can actually uh, receive the benefits of balancing our hormones. Think about it this way, cause to effect. If you, uh, let's say you walk into your kitchen this morning and this was what you found, the, the kitchen sink is overflowing, what would you do? Would you run to the closet and grab a mop and start mopping really fast and hard? <laughs> no, that'd be crazy. You're going to go over, you're going to turn the faucet off, you're going to unplug the sink so the water will drain down the, down the drain like it's supposed to, and then you're going to use the mop to clean up the mess. So really, I could give you a list of herbs and stuff that'll help you to balance your hormones. It's basically like just giving you the mop. The mop is an essential tool in this whole process, but we just have got to turn that faucet off and unplug the drain first. So what's the problem? Well, we've already put our finger on it just a little bit. That's our toxic homes, our lifestyle, right? The environment in which we live. Mold can contribute new furnishings, paint, carpet, mattresses, you know, a lot of these things in our homes have a period of time where they off gas or detox, however you want to say it. Um, so many of the new items we get often have glues, preservatives, fire retardants, finishes, etc. So look around the room and just take inventory of the things that are brand new in your home. Those are the things that are causing uh, that imbalance in your hormones. Plastics and food packaging is another big, big contributor to xenoestrogens, especially if you take those plastics and you throw them in the microwave with some food, then it's, it's only 
uh, multiplying the number of xenoestrogens that you're going to get in your food. Also Teflon and nonstick coatings. Uh, those are terrible for, um, for having uh, loads of xenoestrogens. Um, also air fresheners, you know, room sprays and those little plug-in wall units. Um, I'm really sorry, but I know they smell wonderful. And believe me, I love smelly things, but they are filling your home and you're breathing in all of those xenoestrogens. Also, we mentioned earlier the toxic cleaners that we're using to clean our homes with. So all of these things are compounding and adding to the problem of this hormonal imbalance or this toxicity overload in our systems. And it might not be overload for you, but it's still there and it is affecting you. So what are ways that we can simply and naturally remove these toxins from our homes? Well, here's just a list of some of the things that I do on a regular basis um, to keep the toxin level down or non-existent in my home. Apple cider vinegar, that's ACV. Apple cider vinegar and baking soda are both great um, items that help to remove chemicals. So for example, if you have a new carpet in your home or a new rug, then sprinkle baking soda all over it and vacuum the baking soda up. Um, <clears throat> the baking soda is going to bind with those um, chemicals and help to remove them out of the carpet. You may have to do it several times. Also, if you get one of those nice carpet cleaners, you can add apple cider vinegar to the water and and clean your carpets really good. That will help to strip those those chemicals and preservatives out of the carpets so that they're, it's not off-gassing. Um, also, you can buy used, or they're also coming out with a lot of non-toxic furniture options. Just do a little bit of research. It'll save you a lot of trouble in the long run. It's kind of like health insurance. So use low VOC paint um, when you're repainting your home. And a tip that someone told us when uh, back when we were uh, moving into a more non-toxic environment was to add one teaspoon of pure vanilla into a gallon of paint before painting. And that speeds up the uh, off-gassing time for the paint dramatically to like 24 to 48 hours. So even if I went and got a low, low VOC paint or a no, technically no VOC paint, I would probably still add a teaspoon of pure vanilla into the gallon of paint. It doesn't change the color. It's just one small teaspoon and then you mix it in and then and then paint, and then air the house out for the next 24 hours. Use glass instead of plastic. That's another great um, great thing. I like to use canning jars because I like canning. So we use a lot of canning jars for food leftovers after meals or um, you know, just different things around the house. Use glass instead of plastic wherever you can. Um, also, with the Teflon nonstick pans, use cast iron. Cast iron is such a fun journey and such a it's a much healthier way of of um, of you, you know cooking and frying in your in your home in the kitchen. So so switch that over. Also, instead of those nasty air fresheners, I say nasty, they smell wonderful, I know. Um, use essential oils. You can get a really nice quality diffuser and diffuse essential oils into your home. Also, be sure and use natural cleaners. Now, I just have to say this. Natural cleaners, their marketing has really, really gotten out of hand, you might say. When something says natural, you really have to beware because that doesn't always mean non-toxic or healthy. That doesn't mean that's what we're actually looking for. You know, for example, I used a natural dish soap um, and my hands broke out in a rash really bad. I was, you know, obviously my barrel was still pretty full. So when I had any little bit of an exposure, then I just reacted right away. And so I knew right away if there was toxic chemicals in uh, dish soap because I could not handle dish soap unless it was non-toxic. So, um, so, you know, you really have to watch what I like to do is, and I like to suggest that you find a trusted company that you know is committed to purity and non-toxic natural solutions. They're out there. You just have to do a little bit of research and order your products through them. Um, I want to share with you my personal favorite company for getting my natural cleaning products and why. Um, but first, let's go back to talking about labels for a minute. 
Um, and I'm going to use essential oils as an example because I really like to use essential oils in my home. So I feel very passionate about essential oils. So let's talk about labels as we're talking about replacing um, our our products in our home. In the essential oil industry, there's there's actually no regulation in the essential oil industry. And so when a label says, for example, that it's 100% pure, what that can potentially mean is that it has 100% pure essential oils taking up like 2% of the bottle. And then who knows what else is filling the rest of the bottle. In fact, um, regulations are that if, if the item that they're adding to a product is less than a certain percentage, they don't even have to put it on the label that it's included in the item. Like orange juice, for example, they they use fragrance in all of the orange juices. So that way, when you buy a, a carton of a brand name orange juice at the store, it's going to taste just like the last carton of orange juice you bought from that same brand because they use a fragrance to make sure that all their orange juice tastes the same. If you've ever had orange juice straight from an orchard, every batch is different. It tastes different because the oranges are different. There's different sizes. They're at different, you know, different... Um, they're at different ripeness. There's, you know, the climate affects the flavor. The soil affects the flavor from one side of the orchard to the other side of the orchard. So orange juice, you know, it can taste different, but the fragrances are used and it says 100% natural orange juice or 100% orange juice on the label. And they can do that because the fragrance that they're using is less than a certain percentage of the entire product that you're purchasing. So they don't have to put that on the label. Same thing happens with essential oils and with a lot of the other products that you purchase. They don't have to put it on the label. And let's just talk about all natural. You know, honestly, almost anything on planet Earth could be considered quote unquote natural as opposed to spirits or the unseen. Um, so the idea that something is natural doesn't necessarily mean that it's non-toxic or that it's really a healthy natural option that you're wanting. And of course, aromatherapy grade taken from the British standards where the term literally means two to five percent of essential oils and the rest is carrier oil typically used for massage. But um, but it's helpful to understand the what these different um, what these different labels mean because when we talk about looking for natural options, we really we really need to we really need to know what we're looking for and we need to find a company that we trust. So for me personally, I've actually chosen to use the doTERRA brand for a lot of my products and essential oils. There, There's actually several reasons, but just one of the many reasons is because of their the company's commitment to integrity and transparency. So when I buy a bottle of essential oil from doTERRA, on the bottom of it, there's a lot number. And I can take that lot number and go to the website source to you.com. And there where it says quality reports, you click on that and you enter that lot number and it will give you the lab reports for the batch of oil that you have in your hand. So you know that there is no contaminants, no pollutants, no um, no additives. There's nothing but what I, what it actually says on the label, and I really appreciate that kind of transparency. There are a few other companies that have been shown to have pure oils, but the thing is, you really have to keep an eye on them. With DoTerra, you can check for the purity of any bottle that you receive. So for me. I really trust doTERRA with um, with buying my products because they have proved integrity, purity, and quality. So I use a lot of my products from doTERRA, and I'll be sharing with you as we go many of the products that I like to use here personally in my own non-toxic home. So let's go back. So using natural cleaners is really important but you really need to make sure that you are using a company that you love and that you trust. So for me, that's doTERRA, and I really like their On Guard collection. They have laundry detergent, On Guard um, concentrate cleaner, which I use for my dish soap, as well as for a number of the DIY cleaners that I have in my home. Also, they have hand soap, toothpaste, cough drops. Um, On Guard is a blend of essential oils that's very, it's supporting the immune system. So um, 
that's actually very important when you're dealing with a toxic overload or if you're dealing with hormones that are out of balance because when you support your immune system then it's going to be able to to function more optimally okay so now let's we've talked about our home let's talk a little bit about our bodies because there's a lot of things that we're doing every day that's contributing to that xenoestrogen overload or that estrogen dominance. Um, so our beauty care products, shampoo, especially your conditioners are really loaded with xenoestrogens, your lotions, um, makeup, soaps, all of those things uh, are have a whole lot of xenoestrogens in them. Um, and our skin absorbs those xenoestrogens and that impacts our body. Of course, we mentioned processed food has a lot of preservatives and things. Um, perfumes, body sprays, all of those are loaded with chemical fragrances that are xenoestrogens and they affect the body. Um, also, if you eat dairy and meat, a lot of the non-organic stuff that you get on the shelf at the supermarket has uh, synthetic hormones, estrogen, in the dairy and the meat because they used that in their production of the dairy and meat. So you are just loading your body with more xenoestrogens when you don't go organic with those kinds of things. So let's try and replace those with um, with with natural options. So ways we can detox the body is by switching those shampoos and conditioners, lotions, soaps, beauty care products, facial facial care systems, all of those things. Let's switch them over to a healthier, cleaner, uh, trusted option. So I really like doTERRA's um, beauty care line. They have a spa line. They have shampoo and conditioners. They have lotions and facial stuff. This is just a picture of a few of the items that they have in their beauty care line, um, which I really highly recommend. Soaps, lotions, chapstick even. Um, okay, also sweating treatments helps the body to detox. Anytime you sweat or excrete um, fluids from your body, you are eliminating those toxins. Your body's constantly trying to get rid of them. So help your body get rid of them by doing some sweating treatments. One of my favorites is called the contrast shower. And basically when I get into the shower, I like to do hot as hot as I can stand it for three to five minutes and then I switch to as cold as I can comfortably stand it for 30 seconds and I repeat that at least three times um, sometimes I'll go four times and that what that does is that increases circulation in your body and you'll start to feel sweating so I usually like to finish up the shower with cleaning up and always end on cold um, but sweating treatments is a great way if you have access to a sauna. Um, sauna treatments are really great to help the body to detox, to get rid of those toxins in your system. Also greens. Greens are a great way to help the body to detox. Um, they, there's been a lot of research done that shows that s specific types of greens will actually help your body remove heavy metals. Um, so I really like to um, increase the amount of greens that we eat in our home by supplementing with like a green drink. And maybe you have a favorite green drink. Um, our favorite in our home is actually Terra Greens. So we, um, we, we like to do this often in the evenings, um, kind of as like a supper, a lighter supper. We'll have a green drink with our fruit and you know, whatever else we're having. So, um, so the Terra Greens actually, if you can believe this, my children love and beg for green drink. And all I do is a scoop of the green drink into um, some soy milk and I shake it up and I give it to them and they love the green drink. So uh, if I were you, I would give doTERRA's green drink, uh, their Terra Greens a try. It's really a very fabulous panel of all the different greens that I personally um, want to keep on a regular basis in my system. So another way to detox would be with charcoal and clay. 
So charcoal and clay will bond with those toxins and neutralize them and then eliminate them from the system. So there's a number of ways you can use charcoal or clay. You can do poultices externally um, or you could take and uh, put like a quarter to half a teaspoon of charcoal in a glass, tall glass of water or in liquids and then drink it. Just one little side note about charcoal um, particularly charcoal and also clay is that if you are taking any medications it will bond with those medications and neutralize them so if you want to do charcoal and you are someone who is taking medications just please be aware of that and give yourself at least two to three hours between the time that you take charcoal and the time that you take your medication and then also between the time you take your medication and the time you decide to take some charcoal. You want to make sure the medication has time to take effect in your system before you uh, take the charcoal. So that's another way. If you're really wanting to intensify your detox program, you can actually do charcoal baths, which is what I did quite often um, during that three years when we were detoxing from that toxic overload. Uh, I would take like a third of a cup of charcoal and I'd put it into a jar with water, put the water in first, then the charcoal, and then a lid and shake it up really good. Fill your bathtub and dump the charcoal into the bathtub and uh, and then crawl in and soak. <laughs> yes, you're going to turn black. Your bathtub's going to turn black, but guess what? It all comes back off. Just, uh, just make sure that the washcloth you use to clean yourself with and the cloth you use to clean the bathtub um, that you don't mind them getting stained because sometimes it's hard to get the charcoal back out of those the washcloth and the the cleaning cloth so also there are herbs that help our body to detox dandelion uh, lemon cilantro red clover milk thistle um, those those are great herbs that help support the liver and help your body in the detoxification process. So I like to include those. You can um, you can use lemon essential oil in a cup of water. Just remember that the oil is going to float on the surface. So when you drink the lemon essential oil on your water, just watch your upper lip. Um, and or you could just do uh, lemon juice. I like to do a splash of lemon juice in my water in the mornings usually. So um, that's just to help support the liver and detoxification. So also red clover, which some of these herbs actually kind of cross over and they also help to balance your hormones. We'll talk about those in just a few minutes. Also one other, um, an essential oil blend that I really like is called the Zendocrine Essential Oil Blend. And it actually has a number of those herbs in, included in this blend. So, um, so when I'm doing a detox, for example, just a really easy way to do a detox would be to take the Zendocrine blend and put it into a 10 milliliter roller bottle and then just apply it to the bottoms of your feet at night before you go to bed for like 10 days or two weeks, however long you're wanting to do this detox process. Um, so that's that's another way and that's that's a really nice easy way to um, to increase the detoxing effect in your system. So then the next thing I did was support. As you're eliminating the toxins from your home, especially from your system, from your body, you really need to make sure that you properly support the body. Um, and if you aren't getting all of the nutrients that your body needs, you're really going to struggle to uh, to be able to succeed with balancing your hormones in the long run. So here's just a few ways that I like to support my body. Um, first of all, I eat a very simple whole foods, primarily plant-based diet. Um, you just can't go wrong. The the foods as you get them from your garden and your orchard really are the best things. And some people like to spend a lot of time talking about all the things that you shouldn't eat. But in my opinion, if you spend more time focusing on the things you should eat, you're going to win in the end, in the long run. So really try when you sit down to eat, to consciously, to make that decision to heap your plate full of the salads and or the fruits and vegetables and those things that are rich in antioxidants and that are going to help to support your body because you aren't getting enough of them. I'm pretty sure. In fact, almost all of us 
are not getting enough of those nutrients that we really need in our bodies. Because especially in our day and age, the soil that our food is grown in is so depleted. And so while I while I strive to eat a very simple whole foods, primarily plant-based diet, I also like to supplement with high quality bioavailable supplements. And I say bioavailable because there's a lot of supplements on the market that really don't, your body isn't able to utilize them like it can. So um, I actually worked in a health food store for a while, so I could tell you some stories about some of the supplements. (laughs) They're just loaded with fillers and garbage. So I really like to do my research ahead of time to find not only a company I trust for my supplements, but also um, nutrients that are as bioavailable as possible, as close to the whole food source as possible as well. And I personally really like the long, Lifelong Vitality Pack, which um, doTERRA actually has put together. They did a lot of research and put a lot of thought into this supplement pack. The It comes with three different supplements, the vitamins and minerals, which is the Microplex VMZ, vitamins, minerals. Um, That is a really bioavailable, very easy for the body to use coming from plant sources. Also, um, Also, you have your omega-3 fatty acids, which, by the way, are very important in hormone balancing. And then the alpha-CRS is like a a cellular vitality complex. We're talking about the cell today and how these hormones are affecting the cell. The cells are suffering. And so the the alpha-CRS plus is a really great way to help support your healthy cellular vitality. so that that's what I do here in my home is I take this I take this supplement every day to just help support my body and I'll just have to say my lab work that I just had done recently came back stellar doctors could not believe it so also probiotics you know if you don't have a healthy gut you're not going to be able to utilize those nutrients efficiently. And, you know, 100 years ago, when families and farms had their own dairy cow and they made their own, um, you know, they'd milk their own cow or goat to get their milk and made their own cheese, cottage cheese, you know, butter. All of those foods were very probiotic rich. But when we as a country, as a nation, started mass producing this dairy products, we ran into hygienic issues, which was where the the birth of the idea of um, pasteurization came from. So uh, pasteurization solved that large scale problem. But what it also did was it eliminated something from our diets, which is really, really important. And that's probiotics. Our bodies need that constant supply of of healthy gut flora in order to keep, in order to be able to process the nutrients and the foods that we're eating effectively and efficiently for our body to utilize those nutrients. So I really recommend that you focus heavily on probiotics in your diet, whether you eat yogurt or sauerkraut or, you know, there's many different ways that you can get probiotics into your diet. Um, I found that even with using um, yogurt and uh, sauerkraut and things like that in our home, that it also made a big difference in in my overall health when I actually started supplementing with probiotics. There's two different kinds of probiotics or two different brands that I found worked really well. And the one I'm going to tell you about today is the probi- PB Assist, Probiotics Assist from doTERRA, because this is actually what I ended up using all of the time now. It actually is time capsuled where it'll release the probiotics that your stomach needs in order to start breaking that, just breaking the food down, start that process. And then the rest of the probiotics are released in the intestine where they really need to be. A lot of times you'll see probiotics on the health food store shelves and they got billions and billions and billions of them. What they're trying to do is they're trying to overcome stomach acid because the stomach acid is going to kill off some of those probiotics. So with the PB Assist from doTERRA, they've time capsuled it where they've solved that problem and moved those probiotics down into the intestine where you really need them for the long term. Also, we talked about greens already. Greens is a great way to support your body, get those antioxidants and those micronutrients. Um, Also, immune support. 
Um, I used astragalus and powdered arco for a while in a tea, and I'll tell you about the tea in a minute. But right now, I've been primarily using On Guard Essential Oil Blend because it is such a fabulous immune booster. And remember, I mentioned that I use the On Guard collection in my home. So when I'm cleaning my house, I'm also supporting my immune system. Not only am I not not only am I avoiding those xenoestrogens, but I'm actually benefiting my system and my family's system by using something that is not only natural and healthy, but it's also supportive. So also exercise. Exercise is really, really important. And um, if you're struggling with weight, for example, I would recommend using a uh, Slim and Sassy blend that that I use all the time. It has essential oils in it, uh, like grapefruit, lemon, and that help to uh, decrease appetite. And it also has cinnamon and peppermint and some of the other essential oils, herbs that help to um, boost your metabolism. So So if you don't have Slim and Sassy, then use like grapefruit and peppermint and cinnamon essential oils to help help you in your exercise routine. You're going to see a big difference um, when you support your body while you're trying to exercise. And of course, last but certainly not least is water. Water, 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 water. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough because the best way to flush these toxins out of your system is to drink. The best way to support normal, healthy function in your body is to drink and not drink all of the beverages out there. Your body is craving just plain, clean, pure water. Okay, the last area was balance. So now that we've detoxed our home and our body and we've focused on, you know, supporting our body, now we got to look at what we can do to actually balance those hormones that are out of step. Um, Now, just so you know, I did all three of these things simultaneously. You don't have to do them one at a time. I actually did them all at the same time. These are just the three different areas of things that I focused on when I balanced my hormones and I realized they were way out of kilter. So do you remember those phytoestrogens we were talking about earlier and how they help protect the body from those xenoestrogens? Well, we're going to take advantage of that while we're also balancing the hormones. So those phytoestrogens, their function is really to keep that beautiful little dance between estrogen and progesterone going, whether you're premenopause or menopause. Um, At the same time, those phytoestrogens are going to protect us from those negative effects of the xenoestrogens. So if you're dealing with those negative effects, then phytoestrogens are going to become your best friend. Um, let's just take a quick look at the the cell again. So those phytoestrogens are going to help the pr- body protect from the xenoestrogens by going in and filling those receptors, blocking the, the xenoestrogens from accessing our cells. Then we've got to detox the body to get rid of those xenoestrogens. But those those phytoestrogens, they are also helping the body to balance that that delicate little dance between estrogen and, and progesterone. So we really want to get those phytoestrogens on board while we're detoxing, while we're supporting the body. So where do we get those phytoestrogens? Well, they're in a lot of the food that we eat, especially if you eat a simple whole foods plant-based diet. Um, but there is also herbs that are especially high in phytoestrogens. Here's just some of the herbs. These are not by this is not by any means a a list of all the herbs that are high in phytoestrogens. These are just a, a list of some of the ones that that I like to use on a regular basis to help keep my hormones balanced. But they're also the herbs that I use to balance my hormones initially. Um, Vitex and jasmine and clary sage. Vitex was actually one of the ones that I used in a in the tea that I made because when I first balanced my hormones, I didn't know about essential oils and being able to use those to get the same benefits. Um, so, you know, the there's 
there's there's many different options and depending on what you want to accomplish and how you want to accomplish it these are the herbs that are high in the phytoestrogens um so since balancing my hormones was the end goal i just picked a few of the herbs listed here and i also added some immune boosting herbs i had a nasty tea but guess what it worked <laughs> So I used Chase Tree Berry, which is also referred to as Vitex. I used Astragalus, Powder Arco. Those two I used to help boost immune system function. And then Red Clover and Red Raspberry also to help cleanse as well as um, those are both very high in phytoestrogens. And the Chase Tree Berry helps to balance. Um, so that's what I did. I started off with those herbs and I made a tea um, and maybe you'd like to try the tea you can write down this this list here uh, you can be my guest but you've been warned it was downright nasty I had to drink quite a bit of this tea each day um, bare minimums I drank a quart but usually each day I tried for two quarts of this tea so that's like a half a gallon of that um, that, that's quite a bit and it was really hard, but I was determined and desperate. So I did that for about two months until I saw my symptoms uh, basically disappear. So after I balanced my hormones out, um, I still needed to keep up a maintenance dose because we're still constantly exposed to these you know, estrogens. So maintenance, I would drink a quart of this tea every day for about a week before my period would start. And then I would sail through with zero symptoms and I do mean zero symptoms um, my periods were regular my um, bleeding was not nearly as heavy the pain was gone the cramping was gone I could function normally mood swings which I dealt with a lot of that they were all gone it was all gone as long as I kept up the maintenance then I had no issues if I didn't sometimes I was you know, sometimes the tea was so nasty that I just thought, eh, I'll just see what happens. And I would have slight cramping, maybe a little bit of mood swings, but it really wasn't anything like it had been before, for sure. But honestly, here's what I do now. I've ditched the tea and I've switched to using essential oils to do exactly the same thing, only so much easier. Um, so here are the two blends of essential oil that I like to use to balance hormones. I started off by using primarily Clary Calm, the Clary Sage, the Vitex, um, Ylang Ylang. A lot of those essential oils naturally help to balance your hormones, and and pretty much all of them are high that are are fest phytoestrogenic, so they're going to help to protect. Um, and to help balance your hormones. Whisper Blend also is a beautiful blend. If you don't like the smell of lavender, then I would say try Whisper because Whisper doesn't have uh, doesn't have the lavender in there and it smells kind of like a really, really pretty perfume, like a musk maybe. Anyway, so now that's what I do. I just, every morning when I wake up, I grab my Clary Calm, it's a roller bottle, and I just open it and roll it behind my ears or the back of my neck, and that's it. Or I'll grab the Whisper bottle, I'll put a drop on my finger, and I'll rub it behind both of my ears, and then I have people asking me all day long, what in the world did you put on today? I love it, it smells so nice. So I like to wear Whisper when I'm especially going out and about. And then Clary Calm, I'll use that um, as a maintenance every day. Also, you can get a really nice phytoestrogen um, supplement. And doTERRA has a very excellent, well-formulated phytoestrogen supplement. Um, I'm not trying to balance my hormones at this time, so I ha I'm not personally taking the phytoestrogen complex. But if you are dealing with a hormonal imbalance, I would recommend taking this as well as the Clary Calm and or the Whisper. Okay, so let's talk about menopause for just a minute. You know, it really doesn't matter at what stage of life you are. Uh, xenoestrogens still have an effect on your hormones. So everything we've shared so far will help you just as much as it will help anyone who has not gone through menopause yet. Um, 
And I really appreciate what Dr. Hill, Dr. David Hill said about menopause. He said, menopause should be regarded as a normal adjustment reflecting a benign change in a woman's biological life, away from childbearing to a new period of personal fulfillment. So, you know, don't look at menopause as a curse. It can and it should be a blessing, but it's not right now because we are living in such a toxic society, feeding our body loads of xenoestrogens every day. So, so work to eliminate those xenoestrogens from your system. And in the meantime, while you work on those three things that we've been looking at, here's just a couple of things that Dr. David Hill actually recommended for dealing with the symptoms associated with menopause. So hot flashes and night sweats. Um, use peppermint, geranium, citrus oils, and Balance and Clary Sage. Balance is a blend of essential oils that doTERRA offers that's really, really nice. Um, so peppermint is an excellent way to cool down and may be effective on the feet at night, the back of the neck or in the chest. Um, I also know of a lady who said that it really made a big difference when she put peppermint in a spray bottle with some water um, and she would just shake it real good and then spray it on her, spritz it on herself when she was dealing with those hot flashes or night sweats. Um, fatigue. The lifelong vitality supplements that we were talking about really, um, it provides the balanced supplement, um, the lifelong vitality provides the ba- balanced supplements to increase energy levels. So, um, so I really, really recommend, I've heard testimony after testimony after testimony of people who are dealing with menopause symptoms and they tried the lifelong vitality for one month and saw tremendous difference in their own, their own personal lives. So my recommendation is to give it a try. Um, also ginger, peppermint, and white fur, either individually or together, are very invigorating. So peppermint and white fur inhaled, or you can put a drop on your hands and rub it on your temples. Um, and ginger topically applied to the liver and adrenal glands is also helpful for some people. Low libido, low libido. Ylang Ylang, ginger, peppermint, um, a blend of essential oils called Elevation, and also Clary Sage. So let's just talk about progesterone for a quick minute. Um, progesterone is produced by the ovaries, adrenal glands, and when pregnant, uh, progesterone is also produced by the placenta. So chronic stress produces two negative effects on hormonal balance. Um, hormonal balance. So progesterone is converted to cortisol and adrenaline and that inhibits the proper interaction of progesterone within cells. So both of these lead to estrogen dominance and the resulting estrogen dominant symptoms. So ways that you can increase progesterone in your system would be to start off by cutting out the stress (laughs) and using herbs that'll help to relax your body like lavender for example. Also and there are the imbalance between estrogen and progesterone often requires an increase in progesterone. So this is best accomplished by enabling the body to increase progesterone naturally in the body. So in order to produce that progesterone in your body, it, it needs certain nutrients. And those nutrients are particularly vitamins A, C, E, uh, your B vitamins, and also zinc. So those are really, really key to helping your body to, to, to generate that progesterone that your, that your body's craving right now because it's overloaded on estrogen. And, and I just have to mention real quick that the, the lifelong vitality pack that I mentioned has very, very nice bioavailable vitamins and minerals, including those listed here that helps to increase progesterone. Also, thyme essential oil, um, oregano essential oil, and geranium essential oil Uh, have a direct effect. Studies have shown that it will help to increase the progesterone levels in your system. So um, you can use uh, thyme is actually included in the Lifelong Vitality Pack uh, supplements that I just mentioned. 
Um, but you can use thyme and oregano um, and apply them directly over the liver, adrenal glands, and or the kidney to help with the generation of the natural progesterone. Now just be aware that thyme and oregano are both very hot oils, so before you use them, please, please, please dilute them. I like to get some, you can get uh, 10 milliliter roller bottles off Amazon for pretty inexpensively, and then uh, I use either olive oil, like an organic um, olive oil, or you can use fractionated coconut oil. So. Anyway, those are ways that you can help to increase the progesterone in your system. But really, the biggest player is going to be working on the estrogen issue.